Hello, my name is Fang Jiao. I'm from China and I graduated this year from Landscape Department of RISD. Today I'm going to introduce my project Flowing Garments to you guys. You know, as a landscape designer, I always have a strong interest in textile and fashion. That sounds a little bit weird, but I think most people love fashion. I'm just one of them. The thing I will never thought about before was one day I would bring these two fields together and start to see how they will react to each other and what I can get from it. So in 2018, I took a summer class in RISD called Refashioning Garments. Our professor took us to a fleet market that sold so many garments which were supposed to go to the landfill. We selected several garments and reconstruct them into something new and special. I think this is really cool when you can translate waste garments into valuable and mean meaningful things. So, collecting second-hand material is one of my hobbies. See odd fabrics on the wall behind me? I got some of them from local thrift stores. Some are from a volunteer organization called Fab Scrap in New York. The other hobby is translating them into something useful, from little wallet to the um, to backpacks and pen container to a little puppet, also fabric and light installation. All these stuff are made by salvage materials. Sometimes I also send them out as gifts. So the class has taught me a lot. And the most important takeaways from this class was I finally knew how much waste was produced and it really surprised me. Many people may love fashion, Seldom do they realize that the shirts we wear every day have such a crucial impact on our planet. Can you imagine nearly 5% of all landfill space is textile waste? If we say 1 million tons of garment waste is equal to cover 125 Manhattans, then the US produces 12 million tons of garment waste annually, which is enough to cover the state of Indiana, which equals 1500 Manhattans. Every year, the whole world produces 53 million tons, enough to cover the state of California, equals more than 6,000 Manhattans. What's more important is, this is just one year. The amount of garment waste is growing exponentially and is gradually eating up an extensive amount of our land every year. I always think, if this process is inevitable, then why don't we try to live with it and change the cradle to grave system to solve the side effects? We all know many garments are made from natural materials that grow from the land. Why can't they just go back? If these garments go back to the land, biodegrade and finally support plants, just like fertilizer, this, um, this not just solve part of the problem and also benefits the land. I was so excited about this idea. So I started to design a foldable and biodegradable root ball structure that was made from natural material and natural binders, such as cotton, jute, rice glue, and bioplastic, aiming to provide trees with a water retention and life support layer. I used paper to make a half-scale mock-up, and I also did a lot of material tests to find out how to produce it by using just garment waste. I showed these examples to some expert working nurseries. It turned out to be too expensive to afford and had little ecologic values. So, would it be possible to let garments have ecological values? Can we incorporate garment waste into landscape construction as a substitute of traditional material? Sometimes it's just about our angle of thinking. If it doesn't work here in this way, there must be other ways that we could apply in other places in the world. Instead of treating garment waste as a product, it would be better to see it as raw material. And I did find such a, such a place. Um, this country is experiencing the profit and disaster this raw material brought at the same time. That is Bangladesh, the most densely populated country in the world, whose textile and ready-made garment industries at country's largest manufacturing sector.
Currently, the Bangladesh textile industry's garment units produce 0.5 million tons of waste material annually, and they receive nearly 0.1 million tons of garment waste sold from other countries every year. However, geologically, Bangladesh is a giant sandbox. Nearly 80% of the country is on a flat plain. The only 12 stable ground is the same size as six Rhode Islands. Seasonal flooding takes away soil every year. Unfortunately, concrete embankments used to stabilize the water edge doesn't work here. Severe flooding and land erosion displace thousands and millions of people. We never experienced the desperate need of land as people in Bangladesh do. They don't have extra land to bury so much garment waste, and they are land hungry. You feel so heartbroken when you see such big pieces of land fall into the river. And people are crying. This hunting moment made me want to do something for them. So I decided to propose a new material flow, trying to design a new embankment system for them to help stabilize the land. And the embankment is made from garment waste, which they have a lot there. This embankment is better than concrete because it it is working with deep roots plants, and it changes over time. So the three design layers of my embankment module change differently. The seed in the soil start growing, and their roots extend out after the soil wrap biodegrade, and become a root webbing system that connects and locks the remaining embankment structure with the soil and plants into a massive stable piece. From landscape designer's perspective, after we solve the ecological issue, we start to think about space, function, and programs. Once we restore the ecology of the river edge and gain stable ground. A totally different vision will appear immediately. New commercials and utilities start growing around.、Um, busy cargo ship loading and unloading, people coming and leaving, dawdling and enjoying the business and madness of life in in the village. More utility utilities are built on sites such as a new pier with better landing and open spaces for people and visitors. Look at this factory I propose in the village. There are a lot of people visiting, children playing, and factory workers introducing the material knowledge and techniques to students and visitors. The pavers, cube installations, and elements of the factory are constructed from fabric products, which are developed from the garment waste, and it becomes an identity for this village. More and more people will be attracted to come here. Even these unrooted people will return back to their hometown and start a new life. If this is a repeatable success for many other areas in Bangladesh or even other parts of the world, can you imagine how much garment waste will be digested and revalued? If that happens, think about how much garment waste will be reutilized and how much land we can save.